Hello everyone. So this month we went to an orchid show that was in a city a bit far away from us. But it was the first orchid show in the past two years. Well, the first one to happen in our country. So we really wanted to go even though it was far away. Since it had been so long since we've gone to one, we thought it'd be worth the trip to just go and have some fun, see some pretty orchids and maybe do some shopping even. We ended up not doing as much of the shopping as we thought we would because, well, first because most of the international vendors that were announced were a bit redundant because they were all from South America and had pretty much the same style of orchids. And then when we got there, three of them didn't even show up, so we ended up not having that many interesting and unusual, or well, not unusual, but harder to find orchids to shop from. But as you can see, <laughs> we still ended up doing some damage to our wallets, so some shopping did occur. We also enjoyed seeing the orchids being exhibited by the club who organized the orchid show. They weren't like the most interesting displays, but it was still fun to see some orchids we'd never seen live before, and we filmed a little bit of it as you can see. So now I wanted to show you what orchids we actually bought at the show and talk a little bit about them. You're actually going to have to excuse us because some of the plants we got don't look their best, but we've had some hectic days since the orchid show and we haven't been able to really take care of them as we would want to. So these are the three plants we got from one of the international vendors. They're called Orchidario Paulista and the vendor was actually really nice. We were looking forward to buying some Rupiculus Lelius from them, but unfortunately all the ones they had, oh, we actually already had in our collection, but they had a great selection of other Brazilian orchids. So we ended up selecting these three to purchase. So the first one we got is an orchid I've had my eye on on a few orchid shows before, but they never looked in as good condition as this one. And this is an Oncidium Nano. They said that this, this plant in particular is already fully grown in the sense that it can flower, but I've seen pictures of them where they have these big, beautiful leaves. Even though it's an Oncidium, it doesn't have the usual strappy Oncidium leaves. So I got this one mostly because I find the foliage so interesting. And as you can see, the plant looks in really good condition. And I also found this, their plants really reasonably priced for an orchid show. Next, we have this beautiful little plant here, which is an Encyclia bracteata. I did not know about this plant. I'd never seen it before, but I absolutely loved the beautiful little pseudobulbs the strappy leaves and the flowers are just beautiful. And I love that it's an encyclia, which I can grow pretty well, but it is a miniature, so I thought it would be the perfect plant to add to the collection. I can't wait to see if it does well. The vendor did tell me that they like to be mounted or at least bought it in very draining uh, substrate. So we're gonna see how it goes. I'm really not planning on mounting it because I'm trying to reduce the amount of mounts I have, not increase it. But if I see it's really not doing well in a pot, I would obviously mount it. And then we got this Cattleya hybrid that they had there that I absolutely fell in love with the pictures of the flowers and how deep red they are. So it's a Catacyclia Brazilian rubies. And again, it's a hybrid with an encyclia. And it actually came with a couple of buds, but I, I don't expect it. Well, I didn't expect any of them to survive. So this one is clearly blasting, but this one seems to be hanging on. So maybe I'll have an actual flower to show you soon. But most of all, I'm hoping for the, the plant to do well. So if those flowers don't open, it's more than fine by me. I really need to get it potted up soon though, because I, I've put some sphagnum moss in the roots just to try and keep some moisture to it so it doesn't dehydrate, but I need to pot it up very, very soon because it's gonna get severely dehydrated soon. But other than that, plant in really good condition, especially for, you know, an orchid show bag baby. And I think it's gonna do well. I, other than making them bloom, I don't seem to have a lot of trouble with Cattleyas. 
This next group of plants is actually, ironically, from an orchid store that's not that far away from us. And we ended up doing three hours by car to buy plants from them. But I was just browsing their stall and they had a few plants that I've either been wanting or started wanting after seeing them there. The first orchid from them that caught my eye was this one, which is a Phalaenopsis ludmaniana, but the cerulea version, which I had never seen before. And I'm kicking myself over the fact that I forgot to either take a picture or get a short little video from the one they had there that was blooming because it was absolutely beautiful. So even though it wasn't like the cheapest orchid I could have gotten, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't pass the opportunity to get it, mostly because I had never seen it for sale. It has a flower spike already. They had one in bloom, but I decided to bring this one instead because it looked overall really healthy. And honestly, I didn't want to take the one they had in bloom and leave them without, you know, the one that shows their potential clients what these orchids look like. And they were pretty much the same size and in the same condition. So I just brought the one that didn't have a bud yet, but I'm pretty sure it will make a bud at some point and we'll get to enjoy the blooms. The next one is an Oncidium cruesus, which is a fairly common Oncidium species to see for sale as a little miniature. But I hadn't for the life of me seen one of these for sale around here in like five or six years. And I find it a really cute miniature. I like the contrast between the yellow and the brown. And I've been really enjoying having my twinkle, so I thought another Oncidium miniature couldn't hurt. And I picked up this one as well. Another one I've been meaning to pick up from any garden center or any place that sells orchids is a Hawiara Lava Burst, which used to be everywhere a few years ago around here. And again, for the past four or five years, I was having a hard time finding them for sale. And I think I looked out because this particular vendor had this one that looks really, really healthy. It's fairly big, has a lot of fans. So I'm glad I had to wait a few years to get one again. Because if this one doesn't survive, uh, I, I'm starting to think how yours are not for me. And I say I'm glad I had to wait a few years because the ones that were for sale around here a few years ago were like much smaller. You would buy this sickly little thing with just one or two fans, usually on Valentine's Day. And I made the mistake of buying one years ago and it very, very quickly declined. So I'm excited to have this one that's big and vigorous and hopefully make it thrive. The most surprising purchases ended up being all of these, which I got from this really big garden center chain that was there mostly with big cymbidiums that people buy to put in their gardens. But they also bought a really nice selection of, you know, those orchids that are present in garden centers, but at least around here, not very frequently. And they had a lot of discounted ones. So I decided to just take the opportunity and grab a few for myself. The first thing we actually saw was this really, really cute Masdevalia that they had also discounted. And I absolutely fell in love with how tiny and cute it is. We did a quick Google search and apparently it's very worm tolerant. So getting a species might not have been my smartest idea when it comes to getting my first Masdevalia, but honestly, it's, it costs seven bucks. It seemed in good condition. I liked the plant, so I decided to take a gamble and buy my first Masdevalia. From that same garden center, I got this discounted Oncidium Twinkle because, you know, you can never have enough Twinkle. And at this point, they're like Pokemon. I just want to have them all. And I also got this hybrid Phalaenopsis that was also discounted and I found it really pretty. And again, you can never have enough pretty hybrid Phalaenopsis, at least in my book. We also picked up this Rinka Stylus Gigantia that looked really nice in the shop. But unfortunately, right now it's looking a little bit worse for wear. And it's not just a flower spike, although I feel bad that I didn't have a chance to photograph the flowers before they started to wilt. What's really concerning me is that the plant is showing very clear signs of either an infection or I suspect cold damage. I don't know if I shouldn't cut the tip of this leaf before this spreads 
and I hope the rest of the plant makes it but you know I guess that's a risk you take when you buy discounted plants at an orchid show but I really hope this one makes it so for now it's looking okay but I really really don't like that it developed cold damage and that was one of the things that a lot of people pointed out about this orchid show is that it is big and it has usually a lot of vendors coming but it is at a time of year that makes absolutely no sense around here we're not a very cold country but it is still march and the show is in the north of the country which is way colder and plants have to be transported during the night they have to stay in an unheated facility during the night for three days they have to be imported right now from countries that are colder so a lot of people have pointed out that this is a terrible time of, of year to do an orchid show. I've even heard rumors that the show is done at this time of year. So that big garden centers like this one can then take what they didn't sell at the show and they can sell it around here for Easter. I don't know if that's true or not, but it is true that the end of winter, beginning of spring is not the ideal time to do an orchid show, especially in the north of the country. And if getting our first Mas de Valle didn't make us feel adventurous enough, we also decided this was a perfect time to try our first Phragmopedium. It wasn't in the plans, but I was looking at Equigenera's stall, and they mostly had Phragmopediums, but expensive, like really nice hybrids, and it made me want one. So I had the idea in my mind when we went to this garden center stall, and they had this one here, which was at a really good price for the experiment, so I just decided to grab it. Someone with way more experience in orchids than me told me that it's a Phragmopedium sedeni. And for something purchased from a garden center, it looks in fairly good condition. This one had several fans in the pot, while well, some, some of the others there only had one, so we decided to grab this one. And yeah, I'm really excited to try and grow my first Phragmopedium. I do okay with Paphiopedalum, so this was the logical next step. And I actually find the flower really pretty, so I'm really excited about this one. I ended up also doing some shopping, because believe it or not, there was about as many succulent and cacti vendors as there were orchid vendors at the orchid show, so go figure. I got two plants from um, a shop called Brinca Flor. I've never heard about them, but they had a really nice collection of succulents, especially stapeliates. So I got a stapelia hirsuta. And a wernia primula. And they're both a really nice size and in great condition. The hirsuta has a lot of new growths. And so does the Primula, so I'm really happy with my purchases. And a funny coincidence that the person who sold these to me is also a Stapelia collector, so probably gonna keep an eye on their website and see when they get new ones. So that was our little haul. We got so many new plants to take care of now that it is a little bit overwhelming, but it was still a ton of fun to go to the orchid show, especially after all this time. I also hope you enjoy the footage from the show. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you all next week. Goodbye.